Welcome to Commander Chance with the Knit Picking Nerds. In this video, we're upgrading our patron Moses's Odd Mana Value Tribal Deck. I'm your host, Joe Cherries. I'm your host, Beezy, and that makes us the Knit Picking Nerds. Here for you every single day. This is our 54th day in a row of daily content. So if that sounds cool, subscribe to the channel, please. It helps. And now we're going to go to the video because we don't yes. want to waste your time. Yes, exactly. So today we're doing a commander tune-up. What is a commander tune-up, you ask? Well, it is where we take a patron submitted deck. They send it to us. They tell us the restrictions, uh, budget, any other thing. So in this one, absolutely no budget at all. But for a restriction, we have to keep it thematic. And the theme is odd tribal burn. And then once we get it, we upgrade it. <laughs> I think you missed that part. Yes. Once we, yes. Once we get the deck, we do upgrade it. So we take your deck in and we send it back to you looking spicy. Yes, looking squeaky clean. It's uh, I, mean, I thought of the SpongeBob song where I said I was gonna I was gonna say lace it up and you're ready to go. Lace it up, edge, ready to go. <laughs> no, DMZA me. They are not going to. <laughs> so first we gotta talk about the commanders and there's basically three of them. So I'll read the first one and then Joe will read one and then I'll read the third one. First is Vile Smasher the Fierce. It's one black red for a two three. Whenever you cast your first spell, you deal damage equal to its mana cost to target opponent chosen at random. That's each turn. The other one is Krom, three blue red for a 4-4 flying haste. Whenever an opponent casts their second spell each turn, draw a card. And you might be asking, third commander, but we have a companion. It's Obosh, the Prey Piercer, three and two Rakdos hybrids for a 3-5. All your odd stuff deals double damage. Now we're incentivized to play odd tribal. So just in case you don't know, companion means that starts outside the game, making it your 101st card. So you have to pay three mana, and then you can, at any time during the game, as a sorcery, you put it into your hand, then obviously you have access to him to cast him. Yes, I do have a question about companion, but it's not relevant to this, so I'm going to save it for the very end of the video. But I have never gotten an answer, and I don't know what it means. But we'll get to the actual theme of this deck. What is this deck trying to do? Helmed by these three cards. Well, it's odd mana value tribal with Obosh, all of our stuff deals double, double damage because by necessity, it is all odd mana value. The game plan is to rack up a ton of damage with Vile Smasher and other punishing factors, plenty in this deck, while we draw cards with Krom to protect those key pieces. Sounds good to me. So we're gonna start with the best cards that were in the deck before we upgraded it to get a, so you get a feel of what the main strategy is, how we're kind of gonna win, what the best cards to have are and how they synergize. And then we're gonna show you what we added and then we're gonna show you what we cut. One thing I think that this will do perfectly is it'll show exactly what we're looking to do with the deck because these cards were the best ones already in the deck. So you look at these cards and you say, okay, so that's the game plan. Now let's enhance that game plan. Yeah, first one, very easy. It's gutter snipe. It's two and a red for a two, two. Whenever you cast an instant sorcery, it deals two to each opponent. Well, that gets doubled with Obosh. The game's not gonna go for very long if you you know, sling a few cantrips, some free counter spells protect this. So you can just tap out for like gutter snipe. You're going to untap with it because you're going to protect it. And then just 4, 8, 12, 16 damage to each opponent on a turn. Yeah, exactly. This is this just burns out really quickly. And the fact that it hits each opponent each time, it just it adds up so fast. Yeah, what about Zozu the Punisher? Zozu the Punisher says whenever a land enters the battlefield, it deals 2 damage to its controller. Yeah, all you got to do is hit with the next card, Scab Gland Berserker, and now every uh, non-creature that your opponent's cast deals 2 to them. So now... Whenever, so with all these cards, we have whenever an opponent casts a non-creature spell, they take two. Whenever they play a land, they take two. And whenever we play we, something, we play something, they take two. So we're just dealing two all over the place. And if we ever have Obosh out, it's four every time. Yeah, and let's go ahead and add in Spell Shock, where if they cast a spell, they take two. And how about Sulfuric Vortex? They just take two at their upkeep. If they if they take a turn, they take two. There's literally a, a, we're just deal two tribal apparently, yeah. and then it doubles <laughs> to four, and you can't take too many fours before you die. How about this next? trio of cards is very spicy well the first with the first three creatures that we just mentioned the gutter snipes the zozus and the scab clan berserkers and also our commander file smash of the fierce well we can throw on curiosity and ophidian eye or we can pair it with tandem lookout and all those say when these creatures deal damage to one of your opponents draw a card yeah we're gonna try to cast an instant every single turn to get vile smasher damage and then gutter snipe already deals to each opponent so that's three cards per spell if you get a a curiosity on a gutter snipe, it's over. Yeah, those who's gonna feel real weird for your opponent with a curiosity on it. Yeah. Do you wanna do you wanna take, you know, two or four damage and let me draw a card? Or do you wanna miss a land drop and feel terrible about it? Yeah, both feel absolutely awful. But yeah, all those are really good. Next, something that works really well with Vile Smasher. Well, it's Blasphemous Deck. Yeah, Blasphemous Deck 
Blast Furnace Act is one of the best cards in every deck it's in. But when your commander is looking at CMC, this is nine. When it also is one mana board wipe that, that deals nine damage to somebody, and then you can just start rebuilding from there because it costs one mana, it's going to be the best in this deck from like, you know, every other deck it's ever in. Yes. And Murderous Cut's the same way. It's normally not one of your go-to kill spells, but when it costs one and then deals five, you're in. Exactly, yeah. You, you just... Take four cards of your graveyard, pay one black mana, deal five at random to somebody. What do we want to do? Because we're a burn deck. And then kill the best creature on the field. Yeah, kill whatever creature is, is getting you down. We don't have to worry about a ton of creatures. This deck has a lot of board wipes and ways to clear the board. So it's going to be good at executing a strategy. Just need to keep creatures off our back. Then next, we have a little group of cards here that are all about protecting, well, our main piece, Vile Smasher and Obosh, if he's out. Force of Will, I mean, one of the best counter spells of all time. Fierce Guardianship, if we have our commander out, which we're going to, counter it on creature spell. We also have Force of Negation, just bad force of will. Um, misdirection, which can redirect something that's targeting our guy. Or Deflecting Spot, which can also redirect something that's targeting our guy. And Commandeer, which can just steal stuff. <laughs> yeah. So every one of those spells has a way to make them free. Why are all the free spells odd CMC? You couldn't do any of this with a guy Ruta deck. Yeah, no, you can't do none any of these work. Yeah, none of these work in our guy Ruta deck. Yeah, every single one of these can be free if you jump through a little hoop. We've already done that. This deck will always be able to protect its commander or Obosh the first time around. There's yes. no question. Uh, this next one I really like. It's Temporal Trespass. It is eight blue, blue, blue for a sorcery. Take an extra chance to this one. Exile it. But it has Delve, and that's the key to making this thing really, really good, because you're going to end up paying three blue to take an extra turn and deal 11 to an opponent at random. Yeah, if we have uh, our three Musketeers out, we're going to deal, you know, what, uh, 22 damage to somebody uh, for three mana, attack with Chrome, deal eight damage to somebody else, take an extra turn. Now with the extra turn, we get eight more damage with Chrome, and then if we cast, you know, a 10 drop, it's 20 more damage. You know, something ridiculous. I mean, is that going to kill players? I think it is going to end the game real quick. We don't have to do much. That was, you know, play the three cards your deck's built to play and then cast a spell. Yeah. <laughs> Not, okay. Yeah, that's pretty simple. This deck is an absolute burn deck, and it's really cool. I've actually played against it before, this actual list. Yes. It's a cool deck. Yeah, we're going to get into the ads now, the cards we added to the deck. First card we added is a very spicy one. It's Anathomancer. It's one black, red for a 2-2. When it enters, it deals damage to target opponent equals the number of non-basic lands they control. That's going to be, you know, four, five, six in the early game, and then it has Unearth. Later on for seven, that's going to just finish somebody off. That can just deal upwards of 10 damage, and it all gets doubled with Obosh out. Yeah, exactly. When you're doubling it up, it's going to be a lot. This is a nice this is a nice little burn spell that gets to target somebody out. And, like, you pick the player who has the four-color deck, who has 16 non-basics in play. Okay, take 16. Yes, and we have, you know, it's just a, it's a speed bump. It comes down, deals four, five, six, maybe 10 if you have Obosh. Then it's a speed bump. It's going to chump block, or you discard it with some, uh, you know, frantic search effect. And then, oh. Later in the game, I got another better to do. Okay, take upwards of ten. Exactly. Yeah. This is this. It's on the earth. Isn't like uh, efficiently costed, but you when you're late game and it's go one. It's either if it kills somebody, you do it, or you don't have anything better to do, then you do it. Yeah, you're gonna feel great about it. Uh, what's the next ad? Uh, the next ad is Sir Conrad the Grim, which turns out this card is really awesome for this deck. He's a five four, and whenever a card is put into a graveyard, deal one to each opponent, and then whenever a card leaves your graveyard. Deal one to each opponent. This deals damage. These black cards are usually not worded in a way to deal damage. They usually cause life loss. This deals damage, meaning it can be doubled up by Obosh. And it deals one damage to each opponent, also allowing you to pay two in mill card, so he just triggers himself. And then you curiosity or if eye this thing, it's over. Because you don't even have to you don't even have to do anything if let's say you curiosity and then you play like a removal spell. Well, each opponent takes one, draw three. Now you can just spend all your mana to just have everybody mill and he's going to draw you like two cards every time. Like if you have each player mill one and then you mill two creatures, you draw six cards. And the only way he's dying is to a board wipe. And I don't know if you, because we have so many free counter spells, which we already went with, but if you cast a board wipe from the board, he triggers from everything. Yeah. Cause he, he sees all, if there's 20 creatures, he sees them all die. Everybody takes 20 and you draw 20. This is one of the best <laughs> cards. Well, it would be uh draw 60. Oh, sorry. Just 60. <laughs> yeah. Is that good? I, th I think so. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is just one of the best cards in the deck, hands down. And we wanted some more ramps, so we threw in a Burnish Tart. There's a couple mana rocks we'll talk about when we get to the cuts, but Burnish Tart, it's odd mana, so it's kind of the best we can get. Yeah, I know. And Burnish Tart's a card that I just 
tend to play in my non um, green decks. I just I put this in a lot of decks, and maybe it's not the most efficient thing in the world, but I'm not playing CDH. Yeah, we also added Coastal Breach and Volcanic Vision, two cards that cost seven. Coastal Breach actually costs four because you have three opponents, and then they're going to wipe the board, clear things up, and help us either rebuild or get back on the board first, or just keep everyone off our back and get some positive tempo. Volcanic Vision doesn't even hit our stuff. I think Volcanic Vision is just perfect for this deck. It's going to be a one-sided Plague Wind because all your spells cost so much, it's so easy to just wipe everything off. Oh, yeah. And similarly, we're going to get some extra damage from, uh, what's his name, Vile Smasher by casting into the story and by force. We even like this potentially over Vandal Blast. It's just going to deal way more damage. Vandal Blast kills one. Yeah, exactly. Easy math. Exactly, yeah. We, we, we've done the math on by, by force is close enough, so it's pretty good. Next, we have Commander's Insight, which is a cool new draw spell. There was Blue Sun Zenith in this deck, which I'll just mention now because this is pretty much a one-for-one -one switch. Mm -hmm. um, we're never going to target them and mill them out. That's never going to happen. So Commander's Insight is just going to have the upside of drawing an extra one or two cards. We have two commanders. We can cast Vile Smasher twice and Krom once. Oops, it's three mana draw three with X tacked on. And then Vile Smasher sees the X and goes, hey, take that much damage. So into the story and Commander's Insight, along with Newcomer Stinging Study, which because of Krom draws five, just like the trifecta of amazing card draw. Yeah, no problem. Five mana draw five is good. Like, you just don't get that. Yeah, it's never or not. Five mana draw five, lose five. It's always five mana draw. Th that sounds good to me. We had Xantia to the deck. Comes down, you give it to another player. It's a three mana five five, has to attack. Any player can activate its other ability, which is pay three. Uh, the controller takes two life, and then the player who activated it draws a card. This is going to punish one person. Whoever has it is going to lose a bunch of life, and everyone else is going to get some more cards, including you. You can just start paying this ability. It it's like the person who controls it gets punished a little bit because they take damage. And then everyone else that isn't you gets attacked for five every once in a while. I mean, they have to, I mean, they can choose to block it. You don't, that's the thing. You just, they don't want to block it because they want to have that ability. So it's just like this weird awkwardness. Plus it's big. It's a five, five. Xanthia's a good card. Uh, Viachino Heretic's a three mana creature that's going to start sniping down artifacts and they could take damage equal to the artifact's mana cost. And this works with curiosity. So it's going to sit and play and be an engine of destroy that. Destroy that. Oh, you're going to go to kill it? All right, in response, I'll destroy your thing, and you take five damage. Like, Does that feel good? Exactly. It's just it's just going to pick off artifacts over and over again. It's a little bit slow, but again, we're going thematic here, and this is very, very thematic to the deck. Yes, not so th not so thematic is Expedition Map. This is a this comes from a lack of ramp, because we're stuck at odds. We can only play ones or threes. There's almost no ones. We have Man Vault, Soul Ring, and like, uh, Wayfarer's Bubble. So this is going to help us get uh, Ancient Tomb is in our deck, or... Field of the Dead to help keep us protected for very little investment. Yeah, exactly. Um, next is Mystic Remora. I mean, this is just one of the best draw spells. Wasn't in the deck. Get in the deck. Yeah, no, it is. <laughs> uh, Cultivator's Caravan. Ooh, spicy ramp. If the board's <laughs> clear, someone's shields are down, we can use our, you know, like Obosh or someone who's not going to attack, crew this, and then smash for five. But if Obosh is out, it's 10. Yeah. I mean, it's just, it's a little attacking. Thing that it's a mana rock. You're, it's a mana rock that sometimes can just punch for 10 damage. Yeah. Oh, did somebody else wipe the board? Okay. Well, this doesn't die to creature board wipes. So you can untap, slam something, and then poke somebody just for five damage. That's a, that's a decent chunk. Even easier. Say they wipe the board and you and you can you can just go slam Obosh. Yeah. Crew with Obosh, beat him for 10. Yeah. Did that, did you, you're just getting punished. You just took 10 damage. I'm sorry. I don't know what to tell you. Obviously, my little caterpillar crawls into the caravan and drives it away. He can't fit in there. <laughs> oh, that's so silly. Next, we have Coastline Marauders. This is... I really like this card, Commander, and I think it's underrated. It's slept down a little bit. It's slept down a little bit. Maybe it we'll do a short on it. It is an 0-3. Comes down, and whenever it attacks, its power becomes equal to the number of lands defending player's control. Also, has Trample. This is a 3-drop. So, it can just hit big. Then it dies. All right, it's gone. That's not that good of a card. But it has Encore. Oh, you marshaled that. Yeah, I did marshal it. <laughs> you Encore back to the battlefield, and you get a copy for each opponent, and you attack each opponent. This is a great late-game finisher. Yeah, and you can discard it early uh, or just play it, and it'll die to you know a ham sandwich because it's a 0-3. And it, it's a must-answer threat for a lot of people. They they go, what? Oh, you're attacking me with a 12-3? It, it's going to deal double damage? What's happening? Yeah, and uh, another thing, with Obash, it's insane. Yeah, it doubles up. Oh, my God. If you attack and they have 10 lands, it's 20 damage you have to block. Yeah, it like Price of Progress is them for the lands. Another newcomer, Hull Breacher. It's a dumb, messed up card. It's got Flash. It's gonna. It's really going to work with our, all right, pass the turn with all my stuff up. See what. Let's see what happens. You know, you cast it on someone else's turn. Vile Smasher does its thing and then stop them from drawing and help ramp out your other big stuff. It's going to work out pretty well. And the other 
last removal spell we added, Soul Shatter. It's a three for one. It's an odd mana spell. It's an instant. Those are our criteria. And we also added some MDFCs. Uh, uh, well, it also has Wiley Beckett art. But yes, MDFCs. Also from Zendikar because Soul Shatter was from Zendikar. Yep. We added Kazool's Fury, which is a fling. Does double damage because it's a odd CMC. That's kind of the only thing that deck has. Uh, a Game's Awakening, very good uh, reanimation spell. Sure, we're almost never going to use it. But why do we care? I'll gladly bolt myself when I needed to bolt myself and just use it the 1% of the time it works. It's going to be great. It's a land that sometimes deals damage to your opponents. And the same is true for the next one. Yes. Seagate Restoration, which can just draw... <laughs> one, it's a seven mana spell. So it could trigger that. And it draws cards equal to our hand size. Sometimes you just the best thing to do. Well, it's a seven mana spell with no opportunity cost. It's not like, oh, if you put too many seven mana spells in your deck, your hand gets gums up, gummed up and you can't keep openers because your hand does nothing until turn 12. This is just a land... That can deal seven damage yes. and draw you seven cards and give you no maximum hand size. Yes. And for the last part, we're going to go over the cards we cut. Most of them, you can see the cards that we added for them uh, straight up because we, we just talked about the ads. Yeah. Um, so, like, I can just start from the very first cut and you can see basically what we... Uh, Soul Shatter was a card that we added. Bedevil was a card we cut. Pretty much almost a one-for-one -one switch on those kind of cards. I really don't like Bedevil in any sense in the format at all. I think it's too slow. Three mana destroy a creature. Not what we're looking for. It is a, it's got the versatility. It's three mana. Yeah, exactly. I'm not, not a big fan of it. Next, we cut Caravac the Merciless. Sure, if it's the theme, and if you want to go back, this might be a card that you think is way too on theme to cut, but we personally... Seven mana, just way too much. We, we added more burn. It's not like we didn't add burn when taking this out. Yeah, we got ways to deal damage. Like, if I compare this to Conrad, it's just not, no contest. Ready for the easiest rolling off of our lives because it's all three mana rocks and they're all not good enough. Dark Steel Ingot, Eye of Ramos, Heart of Ramos, Skull of Ramos, Mana Geode. Nope. <laughs> I don't think this deck is hurting that bad for these low power rocks. They don't pay you back until the third turn you have them out. I just don't think it's worth it as much. I mean, we have stuff to do. They can ramp out Krom. I think we're okay with just playing a little slower, but having more interaction and more stuff to back us up. And we got stuff like Cultivator's Caravan to make up for it and Burnished Heart. Agree 100%. And Dark Snowing it. Never play that card. There was a rare in Zen the card. I just is... printed Skyclave Relic. It's like 10 times better. It's... And it's still Not on the good. lower end of three mana rocks. Exactly. Faithless Looting. We didn't feel like this deck really needed. Though there are some synergies. Not quite enough. Swan Song, we have plenty of counter spells. They're we, all free. We have all the free good counter spells. Like, usually one of the main reasons that we go to Swan Song, me and BZ, even for our own decks, is that we don't have 10 Force of Wills. Yeah. We don't have 10 Force of Negations. We don't just have all the Lingon. So when we build a new blue deck, okay, Swan Song, I got $5 to use on the deck. Yeah. I don't have 150 to throw around. It's honestly up to, like, I think 10 or more, but that's still, you know, 5% of the price of some of these other things. Uh, read the Bones, no. Get, get Read the Bones out of here. Commander's Insight and Into the Story are like, whoo, far and away better. Stinging Study 2, even. It's like, would you rather draw three or draw two, lose two, or draw five, lose five for two more mana? Yeah. Um, next. Yeah, exactly. Agree with that 100%. Shadow Spear, I see what you're doing here. Too cute, not good enough. Well, with that, uh, I mean, we have Rampaging Frostons in this deck and Sulfuric Vortex, and then we don't even gain life. Yeah, exactly. We, we don't want to nombo with our own deck. Vandal Blast, we said, was one for one with By Force. Yes, sir. Blue Sun Zenith, we said, one for one with Commander's Insight. Dictative of the Twin, Twin Gods, we kind of just wrote off as, I am going to back away from this type of effect. We have Obosh already. I don't want to, this could backfire on you too. So I, I wouldn't want to have that happen. Yeah, this is the best way that this exact effect is worded because yeah. it has flash, but still, it, the backfiring, you can just, it can backfire so easy. Yeah, it really can. And you need to, you, this deck isn't going to deal 20 damage to each opponent at once. We need a couple turns to sort of protect our thing, untap, trigger, vile smash over multiple turns. So we can't take advantage of this as fast as we need to. Yeah, the next three, I, I think we're just off theme personally. Sure. Uh, reanimate. We don't even have a lot of creatures in our deck, and we're not looking to reanimate their creatures because uh, it's just unreliable in that way. Mirage Mirror, again, there's just it doesn't really fit. It's a, it's fine. It's a cool card, and it does a lot of things. Don't think it quite fits. And Nezzle Hall, Primal Tide, very good card. Just doesn't fit. Just, it yeah. just doesn't fit. It's a seven drop. I mean, we have Academy's Awakening to reanimate our guys, and we have stuff like Conrad that's just going to finish people off real quick. Then for the lands that we cut for the MDFCs, we cut... Two filter lands, the uh, Graven Car Cairns. I always forget the name of that one. And Cascade Bluffs. And we also cut a swamp. Sorry, basic swamp. But yeah, we switched three for three on MDFCs. I think MDFCs were a really good idea for this deck. You can consider some of the other ones. We didn't add all of them. We added three. We this deck's mana base is like 
perfect. Uh, this deck ended up being like 4,000 bucks or something. The cards we added are like $57. And then we lowered the average CMC by, I, I would say, it was 3.58. We probably brought it down to like 3.3, uh, depending on how you count like Blasphemous Act as a, a two-mana spell and stuff like that. Yeah, exactly. This one, it's hard to calculate. Um, But that is the end of the video. And I want to say something really quick about these Commander Tune-Ups. We're going to be trying this new formula yep. uh, going forward because we want... We know that Commander Tune-Ups are in our... The, the video that everyone's clicking on. We know that. So we're trying to personalize it for the person sending it in. Yeah, we talk about every change. This is what we're doing. This is what we think the direction you're... This is where we would take your deck. Uh, we're happy with where this deck ended up. I think it's stronger than where it was before, obviously, or I wouldn't have made the changes. Uh, I do want to know from people who are want tune-ups or have gotten tune-ups, do you like this formula better? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, if you especially if you if you want or have gotten one. Yeah, like you said, perfect. I Your feedback is super important because... Do you want this style or do you want us to go back to the old style? I, we, we're honestly okay with either one. We feel like this is just more personal. More helpful. For for Moses specifically. And that's who the video is for because he is a huge supporter of this channel. And honestly, he's a mod actually. Yeah, not, not only is not only does he help. Um, helps run the Discord. Yeah, he helps run our Discord and he's a patron. He's, he's giving money to help this channel grow. And he actively is giving time, time. to help the Discord not have crazies in it. <laughs> yes, it's, it's succeeding mostly, so you should join because it's free and the link's in the description, but you have to do shout outs. Yes, special shout outs to every single one of our patrons, including Moses, a.k.a. Phil. I'm doxing you on the internet. A.k.a. <laughs> Phil. He's been fully doxed. Nobody knows anything about this person. Uh, you can also hook, hit up the link in the description. We got a TCG player link stewing for you over there. Click it, navigate where you want, buy what you want, and we get a kickback on the order while... You spend no extra money on your cards, and you support local businesses. This is like a win, 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 win. How are you not doing this? Yeah, exactly. You know, you're gonna buy, you're gonna buy Magic Cards anyway. You might as well use our link and support us. We appreciate it very much. And we already shout out the Discord. So I was I mean, gonna throw one last shout out with this because I like to mention it. I really want to say it is free, and I want everyone to know it's free. There's like two thousand people in there, and you can play Commander. Let's see. Like, if you're looking for playgroups, then we have playgroups. Uh, I guess I know you have something else to say, but for part of the tip, Ooh. For part of the tidbit. I claimed this tidbit. No, I have I have something important here. Play EDH uh, recently uh, put playing in their server behind a paywall, which is fine. I'm not here to say they shouldn't or should, whatever. But our server is a free place to play EDH. Feel free to come in. As long as you're a decent person and a human being, we, can, we will love you. Yeah, we don't have a power level. We don't have any sort of uh, barrier to entry. You just talk to four people, chat before the game, figure out where you're at, play a game. You know, if you're... If you're going to be a bad person about it, we'll probably have to deal with it. But if you're going to be a normal human being, there's no issue. And we don't have enough people to worry about the whole paywall thing. Definitely worth giving that a shout out. And my, my tidbit is a question. Where is Obosh? What do you mean where? There's no sideboards in Commander. Where is it? It's out of the, it's outside the Ugh. game, but not on your sideboard. There's no wish board. What? Why are companions allowed? Why can't we have a sideboard? Like, they could say, you have a sideboard, and it's only companions that go in there. They didn't say anything. What did they say? Can someone tell me? I do not know. Yeah, maybe I missed something. This is a strange thing, because there is no outside the game. Nope. Um, so you... You said can't that, Glittering Wish. You can't, you know, one uh, of the, Spawn one, Sire. Uh, yeah, one of the... Yeah, Spawn Sire. Well, that just wins. That gets you 58. You own... I own every single other Essie. Yeah. <laughs> there's no sideboard, and there's no... It doesn't count your collection, like, you know, in casual play. Yeah, so... I, I honestly don't know. Uh, you should. Somebody probably knows. Tell us in the comments why companions work, but nothing else. Yeah, because it's not like there's a companion zone. It's in your sideboard and constructed. You have to take up a sideboard spot for them. Yeah, exactly. It it, it is your sideboard. I I, I mean, companions are kind of cool in Commander. I could certainly do without them if this rule like makes no sense. But I would like to know. That's just my question. I have. Oh, I also I stated this before, but while we're talking about companions, I'll say it again. They should have made companions a commander exclusive thing. It would have been way cooler. But what the weird? What's weird is. They're supposed to be emulating Commander, and then two of them are illegal in Commander. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and they're so cool. I wish that all the, there are so many cool ones. I wish that we got all the two color pairs. Like, I really like Garuda. I love the idea of that companion. That is a big build around. Same with Obosh and like all the other ones. Mori's but sweet. It's like they almost all of them, um, except for the two you can't play. And then Gigantha, who just said, I'm five color for no reason. Yeah, that one's completely. Just a miss also. I mean, I feel like there's really only like five companions you could play. You know, Zerda, Umori, the Odd Evens, and like... The cat the, one's okay. Yeah, Kakira's fine. We built a Luris deck once. And Luris. So there's like, there's really only six. You could play, yeah. And then there's two illegal ones completely. Yeah, two illegal ones. Gigantha doesn't count. And there's one we keep forgetting. Who is it? We just can't. We got to figure it out now. We have to. 
Karuga. That one's playable. Well, I like how it's a, the be, last one I get to. Yeah, so I and I'm gonna cut that out because I don't think you want to hear BZ list guilds. Yeah, Karuga. But, yeah, BZ went through all of them, and it was literally the last one he got to. What's <sighs> Karuga again? It's the draw to the three costs or more. Oh, that one's fine. It's, it's just, cool. You can have cards that do cost three, but secretly don't. Yeah, but that's the end of the video. And honestly, I think companions are cool. But where are they? Where are they? Where, where, where is she? Where is she? <laughs> where are the other drugs go? Karuga. <laughs> Peace out, Chef Scout.